Hello and welcome back or welcome if you're new here. If you're new here, my name is Elena. I'm a school mom to three kiddos. You can probably hear them in the background there. Let's dive in. We're going to talk about um, the rest of the books I read for March. I cut my March reading up into two videos and then as you can see, I got a late start or finish to finishing up March. Let's get into it. I finished two more books that I wanted to share with you. I read Dad's Girlfriend and Other Anxieties by Kelly Crocker. This I read as a digital read for middle grade March. This covered the prompt to read a book that was published within the last year. This was published, I believe, in November of 2022. Originally, I had picked a different one in my um, middle grade March to be read and Piles Possibilities video, but I went ahead and switched over to this one because it was available on my one of the library ebooks. So this is about a young girl, Ava, who has just started experiencing anxiety and panic attacks. So we don't find out until later in the book what was her first panic attack that she had and how she felt through it. Um, but we do touch on that, like I said, later in the book. So I thought that this book covered her anxiety well. It wasn't the main focus but it was constantly there in the background of her decisions and her life which i felt like is very true um, for anxiety and panic disorders that a lot of times you are just trying to live your life but there's this constant undercurrent of uh well at least for ava worry and she researches facts and things and the dangers of things and then it it triggers these things now she's also dealing with her dad starting to date again ava has been raised by her father since her mom passed away and they live in her mom's hometown and she just kind of has her routine and her set of friends that have been friends for since they were younger and she's content and they are really her backbone um, understanding to her anxiety and stuff as they've walked this new journey with her but her dad begins dating someone who lives out of state and they go on this trip to go meet her and her daughter and that is where our book mostly takes place it takes place out of state and the dad's girlfriend how serious they really are with one another the girlfriend's daughter is more of a risk taker than ava and so there's that that clash and ava just feels like her world may be spinning a little too out of control for her and um she is not too pleased with this <laughs> and she kind of is reverts to things that are childish she is a child but she begins to lie and spin these webs and even at one point um a couple points i think in the book she is like i don't even know who i am like why am i doing these things it's almost like she just can't help herself i thought that this book did a really good job at explaining anxiety and some of the feelings that you may feel when you have panic attacks and um just this anxiety overload and i also think that her character um a lot of young readers can probably relate to when you make a bad decision and you're like i i why did i do that and so all in all i enjoyed this book it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't bad uh but i i give it three stars because i just kind of it was okay it was good and i think that's where my three stars is three stars is not a bad review it's just it's it's good it's okay but glad that I picked it up. Um, and I normally, I don't think that I would have, but so I'm glad that middle grade March is little pushing me a little bit out of my comfort zone. Another book for middle grade March was A Rover's Story. I'm trying to find a spot where the light is not too horrid from the, it's a library book. So it's got that lovely shiny cover on it. But A Rover's Story is by Jasmine Warga. And this is about, this book was the group read for middle grade March. When I watched Krista at Books and Jams announcement video for middle grade March, I didn't realize that there was a group read, but when I signed up uh, for the reading challenge on Storygraph, there was this book as the group read. So my library had it available. I decided to go pick it up and I read it. This one is a really cute story about a, um, a Mars rover nicknamed Rez for resilience and how he kind of starts having these human emotions. It is told from the point of view of the rover, which was kind of interesting. And it talks about from the very first time he kind of 
knew he was alive and he speaks to other robots and like tablets and phones in the area um, and of course the humans can't hear but it talks about how the other uh, electronics are like no you're not supposed to have feelings um, human emotions and things and it tells the story of his trip to Mars but also about the humans that are in his life that are closest in his life and so I thought that this book was a really neat perspective I can see how this would be a great read to go along with like a Mars study or even a study on NASA and the rovers so that would be really cool maybe later down the road I'll do a unit study with my kids and introduce this as a read aloud or something for them but I thought it was a cute story uh, and it was really neat to to see it was different to see it from the point of view of okay the rover. I know we're like mid April now um, <laughs> and I'm still doing my March wrap-up but I really didn't finish and I wanted to finish letting you know what I read. I'm looking for my notes, but anyways. So I read The Christmas Clash by Suzanne Park. This was a cute, lighthearted read. It was a digital read that I picked up just, just to have a nice, fun, light read. It is has to do with two rival families, a kind of Romeo and Juliet trope. Both, both families have a um, food type restaurant in the food court at the mall, and the Kwans have Korean food, the Lees have a Chinese food restaurant and so or is that what you call it the little you know what I'm saying anyways so of course both families have teenage um, children Chloe Kwan and Peter Lee and they go to the same high school but they do not get along because of this long feud that has been between two families um, but come and find out the mall is preparing to close down it is going out of business and Chloe and Peter need to team up to see if they can save the mall as well as save their family's restaurants and then along the way of course who knows what will happen between Peter and Chloe I mean we do know which is why I read these books but um, <laughs> and there is more to the mall closing than meets the eye and so they have to work together to see if they can save the mall and save their family's business and then kind of unearth what this feud between the two how it started and what happened all in all, it was a cute, lighthearted read, just what I was looking for. It does take place over Christmas time, so maybe you might want to save it for that era, but we were on our like 24th month of winter and I just needed something lighthearted to pick my spirit up. So we read, I read that. The other book that I read was Ruby Ramos's Recipe for Success. Whew, that was a little bit of a tough twister. This one is by Jessica Para, and I did read this on um, this was a NetGalley book that I had picked up to read. I'm trying to get back into NetGalley and read some of the books on there. Um, I really, this book was enjoyable. It was another great lighthearted read. It follows um, teenage Ruby and her family owns a bakery and she is really passionate about baking, but her family, her parents want more for her. Ruby's parents both come from Cuba and they have come to America to escape Cuba and to to build a better future, what they hope will be a better future for their daughter. And so they really don't want, the mom especially, doesn't want Ruby to be in the bakery or take over the bakery. She wants her daughter to do more. So we have this conflict of Ruby wanting to follow her passions, but also wanting to honor the sacrifices that her parents have made. Ruby enters a baking competition and tries to hide it from her parents, but the baking competition turns into a much bigger spectacular than um, she originally thought it was going to be. It gets televised and um, just becomes bigger in the community. And so we follow Ruby along with uh, in her high school and dealing with preparing for college, as well as this internal struggle of does she want to bake? If she does, how will she explain this to her parents? I think that the author did a great job at showing Ruby trying to be respectful of her parents' wishes as well at the same time pursuing her dreams and ambitions. So I really enjoyed this book. Uh, I, I believe I give it four stars. Also, I will mention both these books, the, both those last two books, because they have to do with food. I don't know if it's just me, but one, I love to read them, but then I wonder why I'm always hungry when I'm reading them. So be prepared, maybe have some snacks while you're reading these. The last book that I finished for March was The Giver by Lewis, Lois, Lois Lowry. I always get that messed 
up. <laughs> um, this I think is just like the mass media copy that we had, but I had never read this. For some reason we had skipped over this in school. I think we read a different book um, at the time that it was required reading. I wonder if it's still required reading. If you know if you have kids that are that age, let me know if your school still requires this. We homeschooled so it was on my son's reading list and was something that he had suggested to me a while back ago and because in middle grade March I picked up this read um, and I loved this book. I ended up buying a second copy for myself because this one is my son's and I wanted to annotate in it and write in it and my son's a big like no writing in my books person so <laughs> I did it. I'm trying to change him. I'm trying to bring him over but he still wants to use, he'll put post-it notes and write on the post-it notes but he won't. He doesn't. He's not a big in your book person, in your book writing person. Anyways, I digress. This book, um, I could see why it's required reading. I just thought it was fantastic, so much so, like I said, that I bought a second copy just to reread and annotate in. And I also purchased the other books that are in the series. So the series is not quite, from what I hear, it is not a series that like picks up the story, where the story ends. These don't pick up after that, but they kind of fall in the same realm. And then the last book which I believe is Sun and you can see we purchased these used. Uh, I would have loved to get like a complete matching set but for now the budget was to buy them used. Um, so this one is the last book in the series Sun and this is the one that I hear kind of ties up the books all together. So you kind of come back to and then it, it ties, it connects all of the books. So after the giver would be Gathering Blue, um, and it does say a companion to the Newbery Award winner, the giver, and then Messenger after that one. So I did purchase these. These are going to go on my to be read pile <laughs> um, to come back to at some point. But that was what I read for March. Currently for April, I've already read six books. I'm not really sure how I did that. I'm um, still, it's more like halfway through, but I also need to pick out, I don't need to, I want to pick out because I haven't done it yet and we're already in April. One of my books here, um, I will link the video for you up in the cards um, if you wanna know more about the shelf. Basically, it's my Christian nonfiction and I wanted to pick out one um, to read every month or so. Um, I wasn't gonna push myself to finish it in a month because if I was really diving deep into it, I wanted to take the time to finish it. But I have them facing this way because I kind of wanted to be somewhat of a surprise to me. I didn't wanna wrap all of them, um, but I, found that what was happening was that I was like, oh, I really want to read this. Oh, I really want to read that. And there were so many that I really wanted to read clearly because I bought them and I have them on my shelf, but uh, I was having a hard time picking and I would pick nothing. So maybe we'll do this and pick one. Oh, let's pick another one. <laughs> I want to lighthearted read, but I don't know, is that cheating? So here's what I picked. C.S. Lewis, Mere Christianity. Um, C.S. Lewis is just a great, great writer, um, but it can t it takes me a long time to really saturate and read his books. So this book I have heard is just remarkable, but okay, here's what we'll do. I'll pick one more and then I'll pick between the two. And then that way, if, it, if I don't get a lighthearted book, it's not meant to be that I'm not reading a lighthearted book this month. <sighs> I'm semi-cheating because now I'm like looking at the book. <laughs> None of these books do I think are going to be like a super lighthearted read. Clearly that's um, something different, but you know, just, I don't know. I'm not going to word it right. So I'm just going to stop trying this one. What's this? Oh, this one already has a poster in it. So when a woman lets go of the lies, discovering the truth about who you are in God's eyes. And this is by Cheryl Broderson. So you can see I do have a post-it in here. So at one point I started this book and then never finished it. Oh, it even, it's got my name on it. So maybe this is a book that someone ordered for me. I don't know. Okay. Well, I'm actually going to keep both of these out. Um, I'm going to keep both out and then we'll start them and we'll see how far we get into it. I was going to wrap up what I read in April, but I feel like it could get too long. So hopefully 
my April wrap up will come out in a few weeks and I won't wait this long to wrap up the month. <laughs> Thanks so much for hanging out with me though. Let me know what you're reading. If you've read any of the books that I've read, if you liked them, if you didn't. Um, yeah. And if you have any recommendations and as always, if you don't know, or you just need to be reminded, you are deeply and truly loved and so, so appreciated. I really appreciate you taking your time out and spending it here with me. Thanks so much for hanging out with me.